We are going to be talking about conflict and mediation in this session. This involves both roommate mediation to help your residents and peer conflict to help you and your team. First, we will go over roommate mediations. Roommate mediations can be tricky. It involves working with multiple humans who may or may not be rational, possibly come from very different ways of living or walks of life, and is a situation where the roommates are probably already agitated. On top of that, the roommates may or may not be bought into the process for a plethora of reasons. We are here to help you navigate these tricky situations and set you up for success. Here, we'll talk about what happens in the pre-meeting. It is said that there are three sides to every story, each side and then the truth. This is true in this situation as well. Hear out both sides of the situation intentionally prior to the meeting separately. Validate their experiences and feelings when you talk to them. Make sure to also set expectations that there will probably need to be concessions as no one is the perfect roommate and they are probably doing things that annoy the other person. When it's time to have the meeting, be sure to have it in a neutral place if it's gotten contentious. If this is just a chat about the roommate agreement, feel free to do it in their room. Make sure that everyone is seated at an equal height as someone towering over someone, even if unintentional, can have a negative effect on the situation. Have the students use I statements. Have the students share their experiences as roommates one at a time and be sure to make sure they are setting realistic expectations. Refer to and alter the roommate agreement as needed. This should already be in place, but one may be needed to craft it if that isn't the case. Set future expectations in the roommate agreement, including communication. For the post-meeting, what you'll need to do is follow up with the residents individually around a week after the meeting to see how things are going. If things aren't going well, encourage them to talk to them about how to communicate that to each other. If things are going well, your job is done, for now. Now we are going to talk about peer or staff conflict and how to navigate this tricky situation. Here are some things you should know to normalize what you will most likely feel. It will most likely be both awkward and difficult. This is natural, but not a good reason not to engage in this. This is also a good life skill to have, both for your personal and professional life. Now we'll talk about what to do when the conflict arises. Please talk to the other person directly and do not gossip. It's fine to ask for advice, but as a fellow staff member who may be giving the advice, please direct them back to the directly addressing the situation. Venting and or gossiping with your staff can make the situation worse. Choose to either do something about it or let it go as difficult as that may be. Use I statements when talking with the other person. Come to them in the context of caring and wanting things to work out. Explain the situation using those I statements and try to come in with a solution knowing that the other person may have some ideas of their own. Also know that there is a chance you could be doing some not so great things, so be prepared to possibly hear something about that. Once the situation has been talked out and there is a solution in place, schedule a time to check in again to see how things are going. This should be about a week or two later. Sometimes this is missed, but this is a crucial step. Lastly, hug it out, figuratively or literally, which means that you should try and leave them on the best terms. The scheduled time for a follow-up is now here, so here are some things to talk and think about. How are things going? Be sure to be honest, yet considerate. Make sure things are well and make adjustments. They may not be going well, so be sure to talk about how to further adjust. This is about your relationship with the other person, the ability to work with that person and team dynamics, so please keep that in mind. Minimally, you need to be able to work effectively with that person and to keep teamwork high. In the end, here are some key takeaways for all times of conflict and mediation situations. Communicate clearly. Much of the trouble in these situations come down to lack of clear communication. Address conflicts. It's important to address conflicts or to truly let them go. Gossiping and letting it fester is not the correct way to go about the situation. Don't gossip. This can be very divisive to a floor or a staff. You can talk it through, but take it to the source. Your supervisor is a great resource to help guide you. Individuals have differing opinions. One of the things you can count on is that you'll interact with people who are different than you. So that means that people have different lived experiences and personalities. Due to that, people prefer to do things differently. So know that conflict is normal, but it doesn't need to be detrimental. Make concessions where possible. You'll need to put yourself in the other person's shoes and also know that you may not completely understand their reasoning. With that, know that you'll most likely need to make concessions where you can. Again, talk to your supervisor if you need assistance.
Remember that this is the best course of action for you, your residents, and your team. We want this to be a successful year and now we have given you the tools to do so.